Good afternoon. I'm Abe. And I'm Frank. And today, we're adumbrating Unit 1 of Meyer's AP Psychology textbook, Psychology's History and Approaches. So let's get started. So let's get started. In this first video, we're going to basically talk about the basic ideas of psychology. In this video and in future videos, if we feel that there is a certain concept that is very important, we'll make a separate video devoted to that concept and we'll link it into this video in case you're wondering more about it. Anyways, let's get started. Psychology actually began in ancient Greece with the philosophers Socrates and Plato. Both of them concluded that the mind is separate from the body and that knowledge is innate. Basically, we're born with the knowledge that we have. It's born with us. Now, Plato's student, Aristotle, disagreed with Socrates and Plato. Aristotle believed that knowledge was not innate. It was not pre-existing. And instead, knowledge grows from experiences stored in our memories. Oh, come on, Abe. No one cares about those 2,000-year-old Greek philosophers. Tell me something more relevant. Okay, Frank, I guess we can skip over a couple thousand years to Good. Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes. What did he do? Um, well, basically, he agreed with Socrates and Plato that knowledge was innate, and then he also added in this idea of animal spirits, which he believed flowed through the brain and through the nerves. Sounds kind of crazy. Yeah, kind of weird. But anyways, we have John Locke later on, who concluded that the mind is a tabula rasa, or a blank, uh, a blank slate, and this idea of John Locke, combined with the ideas of Francis Bacon, eventually came on to form empiricism, which was the philosophy that stated that knowledge originates from observation and experimentation. So that's the origins of kind of modern science. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So that begins to be applied to form the idea of what we know as psychology. And psychology, for the purposes of the AP exam, is defined as the science of behavioral and mental processes. It's a real simple definition, and it's one that it'd be a good idea to commit to memory if you were planning on doing well when it comes time for the AP test, because that outlines everything that this course encompasses. It's not trying to predict the future or predict the past. It's what's going on right now inside the human mind. So without further ado, let's get back to our history lesson. We fast forward to Leipzig, Germany, where the first psychologist, Wilhelm Wundt, is performing experiments on animals, and this makes up the first ever experiment conducted for psychological uh, purposes. As the years wear on, two more uh, ideas form as to how science and psychology should be applied. The first one is structuralism, and that's an early school of psychology that used introspection to explore the structural elements of the human mind. So kind of trying to determine what's going on when the thought process happened what's going on inside the human mind. And the second one is functionalism, and that's a school of psychology that focuses on how our mental and behavioral processes function, how they enable us to adapt, survive, and flourish. So basically, the two of them contrast a bit. One of them's uh, exploring how things work, and the other one's exploring why they work. And this leads us to the biggest contrast that we see inside psychology, the first big question. That's the nature versus nurture argument. Those who support the nature side, such as Plato, um, and Degas state that how we're born determines how we're going to be for the rest of our lives. In other words, things like genes and innate qualities inside our personalities. On the other side, we have the nurture group who state that it's the environment in which we grow up that shapes how we're going to be for the rest of our life. So that would be people like John Locke and Aristotle. So the nature group is really stating that things like DNA, such as in that picture, describe who you are, whereas nurture would argue that things like family interactions describe how you are and how you develop. Well, Abe, I see that we have the seven psychological perspectives coming up, and those are really important. Is there anything you want to get to before we go over those? Yeah, I'd like to make a couple quick notes. I think it's important to note that psychology developed from philosophy and biology. So psychology is basically a combination of philosophy and biology. Psychology is, differentiates itself from chemistry and physics, per se, because it's less about studying a set of findings, and it's more about a method of asking and answering questions. That's what psychology is. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd also like to make a quick note about behaviorists. They basically believe that psychology should, one, be an objective science. 
And two, they believe that psychology should study behavior without reference to mental processes. So, no, so now most psychologists today uh, support that first tenement of behaviorism, but reject the second. Interesting. Yes. Now we can move on to something even more interesting. Though. Ooh. The seven perspectives of psychology. I'm going to give a more theoretical definition of each perspective, and Frank will provide us with an example relating to kissing. Sounds good. So we can start with biological perspective. That's basically how the body and brain enable emotions and sensory experiences and how genes contribute to that whole process. So an example regarding kissing might be kissing is a natural instinct of human emotions. That's how a biological psychologist would view kissing. Next up, we have an evolutionary perspective, which studies how the natural selection of traits promotes the survival of genes, how natural selection works. So here we have kissing is the first step towards reproduction. There we go. Third, we have the psychodynamic perspective, which uh, talks about the unconscious, unconscious drives and conflicts that exist in our mind. So we might be doing something, but we, we wouldn't know the cause of why we're doing it. So here we would have kissing is the first step of sexual desire. Yes, yes. Fourth, we have a behavioral perspective, and that's really simple. It's just how we learn from observable responses, how we learn observable responses. Absolutely. Here we would have kissing is desired because it releases dopamine in the brain. The response to kissing is dopamine, and therefore you have a behavioral uh, stance on the action of kissing. Yep, yep. Fifth up, we have the cognitive perspective, and that studies how we process and retrieve information in our brain, cognitive. The simplest one yet, here we have, kissing is perceived as a sign of affection. Nice and simple. Sixth, we have the humanistic perspective, which studies how our needs for love and acceptance allow us to achieve self-fulfillment. Here we have, kissing is a manifestation of our affection for another human. Very good. And last up, is the cultural perspective or the social cultural perspective, which is simple. It studies how behavior and thinking can vary across different situations and cultures. Yeah, so cultures just like cognitive and that they're very straightforward. Here we have in France, the custom is to kiss someone in greeting. So there we see the culture of France enables people to kiss others in greeting. Well, Frank, honestly, I could probably sit around all day and name different types of psychologists. I but, bet you could. <laughs> yeah, it's not something I really want to do though right now. But So could you just hit the main ones for us? Absolutely. So the main uh, group of psychologists, they're divided into two main subfields. The first is kind of your basic therapist. They're going to talk with you about, you know, how you're feeling and try to resolve conflicts. And then the other psychologist is, you know, the lab coat, the white coat one who's conducting research experiments on mice. And that's more the ones that we talked about during this video. Wilhelm Wundt, he would be a more research psychologist because he's experimenting on animals. So psychology has a lot of different subfields, you know, educational, personality, social, developmental, but the bottom line that you can draw here and apply to the AP test is that the subfields associated with psychology are many and varied, and they differ on how much real science they use because research psychologists will be doing empirical experiments but therapists, you know, they're just talking with a patient. They're not conducting any research. So the bottom line there is that psychologists can vary a lot in how much research they do and where they apply their skills. So basically you're telling us that knowing the slight nuances uh, between each type of psychologist is not very important. Absolutely not. All you need to know is that there is a lot of variation between the different types of jobs you can get if you go into psychology. Cool. Thank you for watching. That was actually our first ever video on AP Psychology, so we hope you liked it. Make sure to like and subscribe. And comment down below if you have any questions on anything. As ever, we'll catch you guys next time.